Hello and welcome to Spoilers, this first introduction to the play The Tragedy of Mariam by Elizabeth Carey. In the following episodes, there will be introductory notes, followed by a plain text recording of the dialogue, a plain text being the first cut edit of our full cast audio recording. It has all the text, but no SFX, no Foley, and it's the edit we use to hunt out textual errors, retakes or cuts, so it's not perfect and we may change the take for the final thing. If you want to just enjoy our production in the future as a thing in itself, stop listening now and wait for the release. Or if you're listening in the future, look for the full cast episode further up the podcast list. But if you're still listening, let's enter Spoiler Land. Spoiler Land! So, Act 5. Oh, there's a problem I have with Act 5. And his name is Herod. Yeah, there's a bit of a problem with Herod uh, for a modern audience, I feel. Uh, It's not insoluble, and I might be overstating it, but I think it is something that any modern producer should be aware of, and it's partly to do with us being modern, um, because there's quite a lot to object to here. So first of all, it's a mad scene, and yeah, look, I, I like going off on one as much as the next Brian Blessed, but I mean, A. Herod's been doing this for a quite a while now. That's quite a lot of look at me, I'm being mad. The whole play is now about Herod. There are literally two people in Act 5, Herod and Nuntio, a servant who relates all the offstage action. And again, there's a lot of speechifying to sit through. Even if a clever director might try to break this up using some of the reported action and enacting it, it's still a lot of talk. And as I said, it's all about how Herod feels. To which there is a legitimate question of, what the fuck? I don't care how... He's killed everyone. Why should we care if he goes mad with grief? Good. So there are issues. That is not to say this scene is not well written. Uh, There's a lot of really good, clever stuff. But the play has ended for many of us in that last act. All the characters we care about have died, and the surviving ones, characters like Salome, do not reappear. But on the plus side, Herod's bravado display of gittishness is an indicator that the author had a performer in mind when writing. This is a part to hand an actor and say, this, this is yours. But before we get to the big man, baby, here's that walk-on part from Act 4. Remember him, Nuntio? He's returned and he's seen such things. But more importantly, he did also draw the short straw to have to tell the king about the death of Mariam. When, sweetest friend, did I so far offend your heavenly self that you, my fault to quit have made me now relater of your end, the end of beauty, chastity, and wit. Was none so hapless in the fatal place, but I most wretched for the queen to choose? Sigh. Maybe you just have a lucky face, mate. (laughs) To certain I have some ill-boding face that made me cull to tell this luckless news. And yet... No news to Herod. Were it new to him, unhappy it had not been at all. Yet do I long to come within his view, that he may know his wife did guiltless fall. And here he comes. So enters Herod. How do you greet him? What are you going to say? Think, man, think! Your Mariam greets you well. Oh, great job. Great job. Now now Herod's going to think she's all right. What? Lives, my Mariam. Joy. Exceeding joy. She shall not die. You better tell him or you're done. Come on, come on. Tell him. Say, say it's not the will of the gods or something, you know, that she's alive. 
Yeah, try that. Heaven doth your will repel. Oh, do not with thy words my life destroy. I prithee, tell no dying tale. Thine eye without thy tongue doth tell but too, too much. Yet let thy tongue's addition make me die. Death welcome comes to him whose grief is such. Right, now, now j just get off on with it now. Just pull the, pull the bandage off. Okay, just tell him what you saw. I went amongst the curious gazing troop to see the last of her that was the best. To see if death had heart to make her stoop. To see the sun-admiring phoenix nest. Y yeah, you, you went to see some stuff. Come on, pull yourself together, man. When there I came, upon the way I saw the stately Mariam, not debased by fear. Her look did seem to keep the world in awe, yet mildly did her face this fortune bear. Good, good, good. Praise her. That'll go well. Uh, oh, no, it doesn't. Thou dost usurp my right. My tongue was framed to be the instrument of Mariam's praise. Yet speak. She cannot be too often famed. All tongues suffice not a sweet name to raise. <sighs> Tough crowd. Mention the mother. Mention the shouty one from Act One. But as she came, she Alexandra met, who did her death, sweet queen, no wit bewail, but as if nature she did quite forget. She did upon her daughter loudly rail. Ooh, that, that's a bit harsh. Whose side was Alexandra on? Oh, Herod's not going to like that. No, 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 no. Why stopped you not her mouth? Where had she words to darken that that heaven made so bright? Our sacred tongue no epithet affords to call her other than the world's delight. Oh, you'd better go on. Tell him that Alexandra denounces Mariam. She told her that her death was too, too good, and that already she had lived too long. She said she shamed to have a part in blood of her that did the princely Herod wrong. Yeah, now you may be thinking, that's quite weird. I mean, is Alexandra turning against Mariam to try and curry favour? Is she trying to save her own skin? I mean, wow. That throws a whole series of questions about who Alexandra is that, you know, just slightly blows my mind. Didn't see that coming. Didn't see that coming. And regardless, it didn't have the effect you were hoping for because Herod is not impressed. Base pick thank devil shame. It was all her glory that she to noble Marion was the mother. Never shall it live in any story, her name, except to infamy I'll smother. What answer did her princely daughter make? She made no answer, but she looked the while as if thereof she scarce did notice take, yet smiled, a dutiful, though scornful, smile. Some dignity has been pulled back by Marion after that last cruel scene with Doris, and Herod, glutton for punishment, once more. Gone. She came unmoved, with pleasant grace, as if to triumph her arrival were in stately habit and with cheerful face. Yet every eye was moist, but Mariam's there. So Mariam unmoved, and then she sees Nuntio, has a chat with this lowly servant. When justly opposite to me she came, she picked me out from all the crew. She beckoned to me, called me by my name, for she my name, my birth and fortune knew. What? Did she name thee? Happy, happy man. Would thou not ever love that name the better? Which is a bit of a shame, because of course we've actually no idea what his name is. He's just a messenger. Someone who says some stuff. Anyway, Herod wants to torture himself some more. But what sweet tune did this fair dying swan afford thine ear? Tell all, omit no letter. Tell thou, my lord, said she. Me? Meant she me? It's true. The more my shame. I was her lord. Were I 
I did not mad her lord I still should be. But now her name must be by me adored. Oh, say, what said she more? Each word she said shall be the food whereon my heart is fed. Tell thou, my lord, thou sawst me lose my breath. Oh, that I could that sentence now control. If guiltily, eternal be my death. I hold her chaste, even in my inmost soul. By three days hence, if wishes could revive, I know himself would make me oft alive. After such slightly cryptic dialogue, Herod interrupts again. But there is more. But forward in thy tale. Why, on she went, and after she some silent prayer had said, she died, as if to die she were content, and thus to heaven her heavenly soul is fled. Four lines, she's dead. Bam. But are you sure? And, well, I think it's fair to say that Nuntio is a, is a little blunt here. But art thou sure there doth no life remain? Is possible my Mariam should be dead? Is there no trick to make her breathe again? Her body is divided from her head. Yep, that'll do it. Definitely dead. Oh, no, Herod disagrees. It's just a scratch. Why, yet methinks there might be found by art strange ways of cure. Tis sure rare things are done by an inventive head and willing heart. Let not, my lord, your fancies idly run. Annuncio is now warming to his theme and the wrong that has been done to Mariam and to others, so he's going to start turning the knife on Herod. He's really going to start to go for him because he's seen something that Herod does not know about. And here's why it's not a very good idea to double random servant Nuntio with other random servant butler because they have to be quite distinctly different people. Yes, they perform the same function, but one of them's now going to talk about the other, and that's quite untidy. Butler is now caught in the act of killing himself, as reported by Nuntio. As I came by from Mariam's death, I saw upon a tree a man that to his neck a cord did tie, which cord he had designed his end to be. When me he once discerned, he downwards bowed, and thus with fearful voice he cried aloud, Go tell the king he trusted ere he tried, I am the cause that Mariam causeless died. Surprise! You were tricked, Herod. Yeah, it was all a lie. She, she, she just didn't like you. Presumably, he then kicks the stool out from underneath the butler and uh, before sauntering onto the palace. Who knows? Herod curses the man. Damnation! Take him. For it was the slave that said she meant with poison's deadly force to end my life, that she the crown might have. Which tale did Mariam from herself divorce? And now remorse. So, big ask, dear listeners, let's feel sad for the homicidal oh, murderer. Pardon me, thou pure unspotted ghost. My punishment must need sufficient be. In missing that content I valued most. Which was thy admirable face to see. He talks about her as an object he possessed for a while. So that'll go down well with an audience. And then back he goes to the she's not dead shtick. But sure she's not dead. You did but jest, to put me in perplexity a while. To well indeed, if I could so be dressed. I see she is alive, methinks you smile. If sainted Abel yet deceased be, tis certain Mariam is as dead as Nuntio giving no ground here. Abel, yeah. Remember him? Killed by the first murderer, Cain. And who do you think he's calling Cain here? Why, then go call her to me. Bid her now put on fair habit, stately ornament, and let no frown her shade her smoothest brow. In her doth Herod place his whole content. She'll come in stately weeds to please your sense, 
if now she come attired in robe of heaven. Remember, you yourself did send her hence, and now to you she can no more be given. So he, he really doesn't care what Herod does to him now? I mean, Nuncio is no scared servant. He's transformed into a minor fury. She's dead. Hell take her murderers. She was fair. Oh, what a hand she had. It was so white. It did the whiteness of the snow impair. I never more shall see so sweet a sight. Tis true. Her hand was rare. And that is Nuntio's last line. Does he stay or does he go? Because he might leave now, he might leave after a few lines, he might leave at or remain at the very end and sort of carry Herod off. It's all down to what you want Herod to do as he spirals down into early modern madness stuff. She was so beautiful. Her hand? Her hands? She had not singly one of beauty rare. But such a pair, as here where Herod stands, he dares the world to make to both compare. Damn you, Salome, it's all your fault. Accursed Salome. Hadst thou been still, my Mariam had been breathing by my side. Or well, never had I, that I had my will sent forth command that Mariam should have died. But Salome, thou didst with envy vex to see thyself outmatched in thy sex. Upon your sex's forehead, Mariam sat to grace you all like an imperial crown. But you, fond fool, have rudely pushed thereat and proudly pulled your proper glory down. One smile of hers. Nay, not so much. A look was worth a hundred thousand such as you. Damn you, country. It's, it's all the kingdom's fault. Judea. How canst thou the wretches brook that robbed from thee the fairest of the crew? You dwellers in the now deprived land wherein the matchless Mariam was bred. Why grasp not each of you a sword in hand to aim at me your cruel sovereign's head? Damn you, life. She can't really be dead. But can her eye be made by death obscure? I cannot think but it must sparkle still. Foul sacrilege to rob those lights so pure from out a temple made by heavenly skill. Damn you, me. It's all my fault. I'm the villain that have done the deed, the cruel deed, though by another's hand. My word, though not my sword, made Marin bleed. Her Canis grandchild died at my command, that Mariam, that I once did love so dear, the partner of my now detested bed. You up there, flaming ball of burning gases, why are you still up there fusing hydrogen? Why shine you, sun, with an aspect so clear? I tell you once again, my Mariam's dead. If the sun, moon and stars are indifferent, what about the gods? Hmm? They're Jove, if Jove he were. Would sure desire to punish him that slew so fair a lass. If Alida's beauty set his heart on fire, yet she not half so fair as Mariam was. And Mars would deem his Venus had been slain, Sol to recover her would never stick. For if he want the power her life to gain, then physics, God... And after button. musing about jealous gods, the nature of complexion in regards to beauty standards and all the rest, he reaches his conclusion that he'll just have to shut himself up and go mad for a while, and then die. I'll muffle up myself in endless night, and never let mine eyes behold the light. Retire thyself, vile monster, worse than he that stained the virgin earth with brother's blood. Still in some vault or den enclosed be, where with thy tears thou mayst beget a flood, which flood in time may drown thee. Happy day, when thou at once shalt die and find a grave. A stone upon the vault someone shall lay, which monument shall an inscription have, and these shall be the words it shall contain. 
Here Herod lies, that hath his Mariam slain. And there the play ends, with the putative future death of Herod. Which is nice. All that we're left with is the chorus, and for once I don't actually hate it. It's actually mostly quite good. It sort of wraps the play up rather well. It talks about how all of the events happening to people uh, happen during one day, and that none of them really knew when they got up in the morning that they'd possibly be dead by the end of it. This episode ends with the exploring of the text as per previous episodes with Beyond Shakespeare Irregular, Alan Scott having a look at the chorus with myself. So that will play after the plain text recording of Act 5. If you have any thoughts about my brief breakdown of this act, or if you have any disagreements with my thoughts, if I'm in plain error, let me know. I might re-edit based on your suggestions. We have run quite tight for time on all of these episodes, so there's an awful lot that hasn't made it and has ended up on the cutting room floor. Email us at admin at beyondshakespeare.org or give us a buzz on Twitter at beyondshakes. Or you can support our work by becoming a patron. Patrons get to vote for the plays we work on next. Go to patreon.com forward slash beyondshakespeare and get involved. But that's it from spoilers for this episode, and for that matter, for this play. The full cast super deluxe edit will be coming anon. But for now, here's the plain text recording with Gear Madland as Herod and Richard Fawcett as Nuntio. And for the chorus exploration, Alan Scott. I've been your host, Robert Crichton, and here's the plain text of Act 5 of The Tragedy of Mariam by Elizabeth Carey. Enjoy. When, sweetest friend, did I so far offend your heavenly self that you, my fault to quit, have made me now relater of your end, the end of beauty, chastity, and wit? Was none so hapless in the fatal place but I, most wretched for the queen to choose? <laughs> to certain I have some ill-boding face that made me cull to tell this luckless news. And yet no news to Herod. Were it new to him, unhappy it had not been at all. Yet do I long to come within his view, that he may know his wife did guiltless fall. And here he comes. Your Mariam greets you well. What? Lives, my Mariam. Joy, exceeding joy. She shall not die. Heaven doth your will repel. Oh, do not with thy words my life destroy. But prithee, tell no dying tale. Thine eye without thy tongue doth tell but too, too much. Yet let thy tongue's addition make me die. Death welcome comes to him whose grief is such. I went amongst the curious gazing troop to see the last of her that was the best, to see if death had heart to make her stoop, to see the sun-admiring phoenix nest. When there I came, upon the way I saw the stately Mariam, not debased by fear. Her look did seem to keep the world in awe, yet mildly did her face this fortune bear. Thou dost usurp my right. My tongue was framed to be the instrument of Mariam's praise. Yet speak. She cannot be too often famed. All tongues suffice not a sweet name to raise. But as she came... She Alexandra met, who did her death, sweet queen, no wit bewail, but as if nature she did quite forget, she did upon her daughter loudly rail. Why stopped you not her mouth? Where had she words to darken that that heaven made so bright? Our sacred tongue no epithet affords to call her other than the world's delight. She told her that her death was too, too good, and that already she had lived too long. She said she shamed to have a part in blood of her that did the princely Herod wrong. Base pick-thank devil, shame. It was all her glory that she to noble Marion was the mother. 
never shall it live in any story, her name except to infamy I'll smother. What answer did her princely daughter make? She made no answer, but she looked the while as if thereof she scarce did notice take, yet smiled, a dutiful, though scornful, smile. Sweet creature, I that look to mind do call, full oft have Herod been amazed withal. Gone. She came unmoved, with pleasant grace, as if to triumph her arrival were in stately habit and with cheerful face. Yet every eye was moist but Mariam's there. When justly opposite to me she came, she picked me out from all the crew. She beckoned to me called me by my name, for she my name, my birth, and fortune knew. What? Did she name thee? Happy, happy man! Would thou not ever love that name the better? But what sweet tune did this fair dying swan afford thine ear? Tell all, omit no letter. Tell thou, my lord, said she. Me? Meant she me? It's true. The more my shame, I was her lord. Were I not mad, her lord I still should be. But now her name must be by me adored. Oh, say, what said she more? Each word she said shall be the food whereon my heart is fed. Tell thou, my lord, thou saw'st me lose my breath. Oh, that I could that sentence now control. If guiltily... Eternal be my death. I hold her chaste, even in my inmost soul. By three days hence, if wishes could revive, I know himself would make me oft alive. Three days, three hours, three minutes, not so much a minute in a thousand parts divide. My penitency for her death is such as in the first I wish she had not died. But forward in thy tale. Why, on she went. And after she some silent prayer had said, she died, as if to die she were content, and thus to heaven her heavenly soul is fled. But art thou sure there doth no life remain? Is it possible my Mariam should be dead? Is there no trick to make her breathe again? Her body is divided from her head. Why, yet methinks there might be found by art strange ways of cure. Tis sure rare things are done by an inventive head and willing heart. Let not, my lord, your fancies idly run. It is as possible it should be seen that we should make the holy Abraham live, though he entombed two thousand years had been, as breath again to slaughtered Mariam give. But now... For more assaults, prepare your ears. There cannot be a further cause of moan. This accident shall shelter me from fears. What can I fear? Already Mariam's gone. Yet, tell in what you will. As I came by from Mariam's death, I saw upon a tree a man that to his neck a cord did tie, which cord he had designed his end to be. When me he once discerned, he downwards bowed, and thus with fearful voice he cried aloud, Go tell the king he trusted ere he tried, I am the cause that Mariam causeless died. Damnation take him! For it was the slave that said she meant with poison's deadly force to end my life, that she the crown might have. Which tale did Mariam from herself divorce? Oh, pardon me, thou pure unspotted ghost. My punishment must need sufficient be, and missing that content I valued most which was thy admirable face to see. I had but one inestimable jewel, yet when I had no monarch had the like. And therefore may I curse myself as 
cruel. It was broken by a blow myself did strike. I gazed thereon. You never thought me blessed. For when on it my dazzled eye might rest, a precious mirror made by wondrous art, I prized it ten times dearer than my crown, and laid it up fast folded in my heart. Yet I in sudden choler cast it down and bashed it all to pieces. It was no foe that robbed me of it, no Arabian host, nor no Armenian guide hath used me so. But Herod's wretched self hath Herod crossed. She was my graceful moiety. Me a curse to slay my better half and save my worst. But sure she is not dead. You did but jest. To put me in perplexity a while. To well indeed if I could so be dressed. I see she is alive. Methinks you smile. If sainted Abel yet deceased be, tis certain Mariam is as dead as he. Why, then go call her to me. Bid her now put on fair habit, stately ornament, and let no frown her shade her smoothest brow in her doth Herod place his whole content. She'll come in stately weeds to please your sense, if now she come attired in robe of heaven. Remember, you yourself did send her hence, and now to you she can no more be given. She's dead. Hell take her murderers. She was fair. Oh, what a hand she had. It was so white. It did the whiteness of the snow impair. I never more shall see so sweet a sight. Tis true. Her hand was rare. Her hand? Her hands. She had not singly one of beauty rare, but such a pair as here where Herod stands, he dares the world to make to both compare. Accursed Salome, hadst thou been still, my Mariam had been breathing by my side. Or well, never had I, had I had my will sent forth command that Mariam should have died. But Salome, Thou didst with envy vex to see thyself outmatched in thy sex. Upon your sex's forehead, Mariam sat to grace you all like an imperial crown. But you, fond fool, have rudely pushed thereat and proudly pulled your proper glory down. One smile of hers. Nay, not so much. A look was worth a hundred thousand such as you. Judea. How canst thou the wretch's brook that robbed from thee the fairest of the crew? You dwellers in the now deprived land wherein the matchless Mariam was bred. Why grasp not each of you a sword in hand to aim at me your cruel sovereign's head? Or when you think of Herod as your king and owner of the pride of Palestine, this act to your remembrance likewise bring. Does I have overthrown your royal line. Within her purer veins the blood did run that from her grandam Sarah she derived, whose beldame age the love of kings hath won. Oh, that her issue had as long been lived. But can her eye be made by death obscure? I cannot think but it must sparkle still. Foul sacrilege to rob those lights so pure from out a temple made by heavenly skill. I'm the villain that have done the deed, the cruel deed, though by another's hand. My word, though not my sword, made Marin bleed. Her Canis grandchild died at my command, that Mariam, that I once did love so dear, the partner of my now detested bed. Why shine you, son, with an aspect so clear? I tell you once again, my Mariam's dead. You could but shine if some Egyptian blouse or Ethiopian dowdy lose her life. This was. And wherefore bend you not your brows, the king of Jewry's fair and spotless wife? Deny thy beams, and moon, refuse thy light. Let all the stars be dark. Let Jewry's eye no more distinguish which is day and night. 
since her best birth did in her bosom die. Those fond idolaters, the men of Greece, maintain these orbs are safely governed, that each within themselves have gods apiece, by whom their steadfast course is justly led. But were it so, as so it cannot be, they all would put their mourning garments on. Not one of them would yield a light to me, to me that is the cause that Mariam's gone. For though they reign their satin melancholy of sour behaviours and of angry mood, they feign him likewise to be just and holy, and justice needs must seek revenge for blood. Their Jove, if Jove he were, would sure desire to punish him that slew so fair a lass. For Leda's beauty set his heart on fire, yet she not half so fair as Mariam was. And Mars would deem his Venus had been slain, Sol to recover her would never stick. For if he want the power her life to gain, then physics god is but an empiric. The queen of love would storm for beauty's sake. And Hermes, too, since he bestowed her wit, the night's pale light for angry grief would shake to see chaste Mariam die in age unfit. But oh, I am deceived. She passed them all in every gift, in every property. Her excellencies wrought her timeless fall, and they rejoiced, not grieved, to see her die. The Paphian goddess did repent her waste when she to one such beauty did allow. Mercurius thought her wit his wit surpassed, and Cynthia envied Mariam's brighter brow. But these are fictions. They are void of sense. The Greeks but dream, and dreaming falsehoods tell. They neither can offend nor give defence, and not by them it was my Marim fell. If she had been like an Egyptian black, and not so fair, she had been longer lived. Her overflow of beauty turned back, and drowned the spring from whence it was derived. Her heavenly beauty "'Twas that made me think that it with chastity could never dwell. "'But now I see that heaven in her did link a spirit and a person to excel. "'I'll muffle up myself in endless night, "'and never let mine eyes behold the light. "'Retire thyself, vile monster.' Worse than he that stained the virgin earth with brother's blood. Still in some vault or den enclosed be, Where with thy tears thou mayst beget a flood, Which flood in time may drown thee. Happy day, when thou at once shalt die and find a grave. A stone upon the vault someone shall lay, Which monument shall an inscription have? And these shall be the words it shall contain. Here Herod lies, that hath his Mariam slain. Let's read through the end of the play. So th this is effectively the epilogue, isn't this, it? This is, yeah, this is the close. Uh, which opens with... Er yeah, basically, Erid has just found out that his order to murder Mariam has happened, and he's really... He does his massive speech going, Oh, my God! Oh, God! I'm, I'm a mess! Whoever hath beheld with steadfast eye the strange events of this one only day, how many were deceived, how many die... That once today de grounds of safety lay, it will from then all certainty bereave, since twice six hours so many can deceive. This morning Herod held for surely dead, and all the Jews on Mariam did attend, and Constabius, Constabarus, by the way, uh, sorry, and Constabarus rise from Salome's bed, 
That should be Salome, shouldn't it? Yeah, so it's Salome's. You have to go with Salome. Yes, I'm from Salome's bed, and neither dreamed of a divorce or end. Ferus joyed that he might have his wife, and Babas sons for safety of their life. Tonight our Herod doth al alive remain, the guiltless Mariam is deprived of breath. Stout Constabarus, both divorced and slain, the valiant sons of Babas have their death. Ferus surely his love to be bereft, if Salome his suit unmade had left. Herod this morning did expect with joy to see his Mariam's much beloved face, and yet ere night he did her life destroy, and surely thought she did her name disgrace. Yet now again, so short do humours last, he both repents her death and knows her chaste. Had he with wisdom now her death delayed, he at his pleasure might command her death. But now he hath his power so much betrayed, as all his woes cannot restore her breath. Now doth he strangely, lunatically rave, because his Mariam's life he cannot save. This day's events were certainly ordained, to be the warning to posterity. So many changes are therein contained, so admirably strange variety. This day alone, our sages Hebrews shall, in after times, the school of wisdom call. Well, that's much more straightforward, it, isn't it? It's it, just a praise it, of the it, plot, really, it, isn't it? It's <laughs> basically, the, you sat through the last hour and 50 minutes, oh, and I'm now going to tell, tell you the you. whole bloody story. Isn't it sad? In hundred, isn't, in hundred, it, in, isn't it sad, everyone? In 50 lines. Yeah, isn't it, isn't it sad? Isn't it sad? Anyway, let's go stanza by stanza. Okay. Whoever hath beheld with steadfast eye the strange events of this own one only day, how many were deceived, how many die, that once today the grounds of safety lay. It, it will, will from them all certainty bereave, since twice six hours, hours so, so many, many can deceive. deceive. So it's a tw it explains the time frame, which is useful. It's a 12 hour. Everything happens in twelve hours. Yeah, I mean it. Um, it it's is, you know, it's, it's going. It's going with the great unities, isn't yeah. it? Um, I'm no, not. I'm not. Quite. I'm not Only sure that the echo actually works at that point. No, I don't think it does at all. And this chorus sounds very different anyway. It, it doesn't feel like it's personified the, I, at all. This feels like a. This is the end of the play. Yeah, that, that you have been watching. Yeah. Anyway, so I. So I think doing it without the echo I is probably echo. sensible. Um. So, yeah, so that's basically, it's been a hell of a day, hasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? That's that's basically sums up that first stanza. Mm. And now we're going to go into Constabarus and Ferorus and Babas mm. and all that stuff. This morning Herod held for surely dead, and all the Jews on Mariam did attend. And Constabarus arised from Solom's bed, and neither dreamed of a divorce or end. Ferrarus joyed that he might have his wife, and Babas sons for safety of their life. Yeah, that's basically explained the plot. Um, so, um, everyone thought Herod was dead. Everyone was following Mariam because they thought she was going to take over. Constabarus, um, when he got out of bed with Salome in the morning, <laughs> never dreamed that he'd be divorced from her and dead. <laughs> Ferorus gets his wife that he wants, and the hidden sons um, are dead. So, yeah, it's a good mm. roundup. It's a mm. good roundup. Stanza three. Tonight our Herod doth alive remain. The guiltless Mariam is deprived of breath. Stout Constabarus, both divorced and slain. The valiant sons of Babas have their death. Ferorus sure his love to be bereft. If Salome her suit unmade had left. So it's a nice contrast so, with the previous stanza of so this is what everyone thought in the morning. Yeah. Now the close of play, Herod's alive, guilt Marion, guiltless, is dead. Stout Constabarus has uh, been divorced and killed. Um, and the sons of Baba have had their death. Uh, and Ferorus was sure his love would be bereft. Uh, if Salome hadn't um, 
appealed to Herod on his behalf. So mm. um, it's, uh, that's fun. Herod this morning. So let's go from there. So this is again in the past to today. In the past, you know, the difference. Right, yes. The shift in time, what it does to the story. Yeah, before and after. Yeah. Herod this morning did expect with joy to see his Mariam's much beloved face. And yet ere night he did her life destroy, and surely thought she did her name disgrace. Yet now again, so short do humours last, he both repents her death and knows her chaste. So yes, he, he didn't expect to kill her. He um, he did kill her and then he's a bit sad. A bit sad about killing her. And there's a follow-on from that thought. Mm. Had he with wisdom now her death delayed, he at his pleasure might command her death. But now he hath his power so much betrayed as all his woes cannot restore her breath. Now doth he strangely, lunatically rave, because his Mariam's life he cannot save. Yep, so he's gone a bit mad. To be fair, it's not trying to make us feel sympathy for him at all. It's not like going, oh, poor man, he killed his wife. It's so sad for him. Uh, it's not doing that, which is nice. It's nice, because I would yeah. suspect the three Visc four choruses would have done that. This day's events were certainly ordained to be the warning to posterity. So many changes are therein contained. So admirably strange variety. You have admirably. I've just got admirable. Admirably. Oh, try admirable. I think admirable st works better. This day's events were certainly ordained to be the warning to posterity. So many changes are therein contained. So admirable change variety. This day alone our sagest Hebrew shall in after times the school of wisdom call. Admirably seems to work better for me. I, I think in terms of the sense. No, I think admirable works better. I prefer. I mean, it still feels like there's a word missing. So many changes are therein contained, so admirable a strange variety is how I would shift it. So admirably strange variety just doesn't with the additional e at the, the with variety it just it makes that feel really clunky. Hmm. I don't like it. At all. I I don't know what the logic of the change is. I don't know which hmm. of these is more accurate. Yeah, I mean, I mean, almost if one was going through, I'm not sure that that last stanza actually adds an awful lot. I don't like other it. than I don't of, like it. Um, I mean, I mean, the, effectively the the clunk from. It's just it's our Line. sagest Hebrew shall in after times the school of wisdom call. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, if effectively the what's shown here from line two five nine through to two eight seven two eight eight. Yeah, it's just basically which is just the plot summary. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, 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 I think I, I works. Like, I, I think that's fine. And but that's um, that's that. Right. Any any additional thoughts? No, I, I think... I think we've covered everything, really, haven't we? I think it, it would depend on how it hangs together with yeah. the rest of the piece. Mm. I mean, I think I've answered the question that I set myself, which is, am I doing this chorus properly, properly? And the answer is no. No, I... I, 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 think, I think I can't I think insert this into the play. No, I, I, th I think there are some bits which are excerpts which could be... Used, but I think used. I can't get across.